get into this in just a moment. Our own Jonas Cheney went out in search of an answer to a related question. What exactly does informed consent mean? Informed consent, I'm honestly really not sure uh, how I define it. I know how I feel about how things transpire. When you ask me to do something or you do something to me or for me and I don't know about it. So informed consent, that's something I think that needs to be explained. Okay, let's explain why this terminology can be so confusing. Well, I think informed consent basically is confusing to folks because it, 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 they don't often think that when they deal with a doctor, they have to kind of look out for themselves and give permission for what the doctor's going to do. They want to trust their doctor. So when you want to trust the person, you're not really looking to say, would you please be sure to tell me all the risks, all the benefits, and all the options. That's kind of what you might do with a lawyer or uh, someone you thought was trying to sell you a used car. It's not exactly uh, the same as dealing with a physician. But building trust outside a clinical environment in the community where people live, work, play, and worship is a brand new paradigm. One that arrives less than 15 years after former President Bill Clinton makes a public apology for the infamous experiments at Tuskegee. And just when we get a handle on that, comes this. There was an extraordinary apology today from President Obama for something that happened more than 60 years ago. The U.S. conducted secret medical experiments that involved intentionally infecting Guatemalan metal patients with sexually transmitted diseases. The secret experiments took place in Guatemala between 1946 and 1948, financed by the U.S. government and supervised by U.S. government doctors. Close to 700 Guatemalans were inoculated, including prostitutes, institutionalized mental patients, and prisoners. Said the Surgeon General at the time, quote, we couldn't do this in America. Fortunately, says Dr. Rhonda Johnson, it's a new day in the U.S. We need therapeutic advances just like everybody else. It's time to forget some of the uh, legacies of the past. It's time to move on past Tuskegee and some of the other medical experimentation that has been done in the past. This is a new day and there are procedures in place so that people don't have to worry uh, and feel like they're going to be victimized as in previous times. Dr. Kaplan says the one-size-fits-all approach to drugs and vaccines is now passe. It's not that medicine is trying to be racist, says Kaplan. It's just that medicine is trying to be fine-tuned to the individual differences that people bring when they get sick. We need minority participation, we need African-American participation research because we're starting to move toward an era where drugs are designed for the individual. No more one-size-fits-all. Now it's Art Kaplan, you need this blood pressure medicine because it's not going to cause side effects and it's going to be very effective for you even though it's not going to be effective for uh, maybe other people in your community. But Kaplan says he still understands why some minorities remain skeptical. People remember that we actually had within the living memory of a lot of uh, older African Americans segregated wards and there was a lot of racism in the healthcare system. They remember that. They wonder you know, if I can't get into this hospital for care, why am I going to go there to do research?